Today we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of Hunt Showdown 1896. And trust me, there is a little bit of everything. Now, instead of going through each individual change, good, bad, and ugly in order, I'm simply just going to read through the Steam patch notes, and we'll take it from there. I did manage to get footage of almost everything in the said patch notes, and we'll just start from the top and we'll work our way down. So, is Mammon's Gulch, the fourth map to come to Hunt Showdown. A large one kilometer map set in the new mountain biome with large forests, mountains, rivers, and underground mines. 16 different locations, increased verticality, contains bats and cows. The only things I really have to say about the map are, it's awesome. I really, really enjoy playing on it. It does add a little, a new level of long range uh, shootouts, long range fights. Uh, that verticality is really, really visible in the mountainous areas towards the center of the map. And overall, I think it's a wonderful map. <clears throat> Just in general, I think it's a really, really fun map to play on. It's really nice. I cannot wait for the revamped versions of maps 1, 2, and 3. That's going to be really nice to see as well, but for now, I am genuinely very happy with the new map. So, that was a, that's a good. That's good. Scrolling down here to the new equipment. Now, the new equipment is interesting. The first new equipment we have is the 1865 carbine. 145. That is a, that is still mental to this day. Now, this is a lever action repeating rifle with a 7 round magazine and it says it has a well balance between power, speed and accuracy. And it was personally approved by Abraham Lincoln, which is actually a true fact. 80 89 to the arms, 61 to the chest. That are the legs. That's that is crazy. Wait, what? Okay, hang on. 78. 72. 78. Another cool thing about this gun is you don't need bullet grub or anything. You literally just need iron eye. If even iron eye, I don't even think you can use iron eye with this, can you? Maybe. Sick reload, too. Love that. This is probably one of the greatest guns to ever get implemented into this game. It's not bad, and I don't know whether to call it good or ugly. It's a bit of both. It's a bit good and ugly, because I believe it is almost borderline overpowered. Okay. I'll toss up some footage on screen right now of me in the shooting range, because I could not find anyone in-game to kill and steal it off of, at least during my uh, recording session, which I streamed, by the way. Check that out. And it was so... Let me take it from the top. It does 145 damage. Let that sink in. 7 plus 1 rounds. Medium ammo, mind you. 145 damage. Within 25 meters, I think. Think about that for a second. And even out to 50 meters, it still does over 100. This gun is insane. Alright, insane. Just insane. It's crazy, actually. The reload is not... I don't even think the reload's super long for what you do, you know? I think it's an insane weapon. Insane just everything. I think it's crazy. So, there's that. I'm not sure what to say about it too much. We'll see how it goes along. We'll see if this becomes meta, which there's not really a huge meta. There's not meta in this game because everything's a one-shot headshot, especially now everything actually is a one-shot headshot out to any range. You just got to be able to hit your shots. So, you know, we'll see where that goes. We're just going to move on for now. The Infantry 73L. It's just a longer version of the normal infantry, which... They renamed a lot of the stuff. They took away the brand names they made in-game for each weapon and just call it what it is. Like, instead of the Crown and King Auto 5, it's just the Auto 5. Uh, they renamed the Upper Mat the Haymaker. I think it's a decent addition. I don't want to call it a lazy addition, but, I mean, it's kind of meh. With the, uh, but it does have a sniper variant. And with the new uh, bullet drop mechanic, uh, small ammo has the least amount of bullet drop, 
and it has 150 meters. It can shoot flat out to 150 meters before a bullet starts dropping. So that's pretty neat. It's honestly, it's it's kind of a crazy. It's kind of crazy. And with levering, you have 18 rounds, and levering is faster now. We'll get to that here in a second. But overall, that's good. I think it's good. It's good. It's balanced. It's good. We'll go with that. I think this is the only light ammunition sniper we have in the game right now. Crouching helps it a lot. This thing right here is probably a laser. 150 meters. That is right at 150. That's kind of insane. That's just a miss on my part, but yeah. The dead eye crossbow. Let's try the dead eye crossbow. It's still just the crossbow. <laughs> There's really not that much to it. I mean, it is still just the crossbow. Even if it does have a kind of weird looking scope. That was pretty good. <laughs> Put a scope on a crossbow. It ain't changed much. That's about it. I got. I mean, yeah. I don't like the scope that much. It's meh. I would call this an ugly. The Rival 78 Trauma. Now, I am going to have to do something different here. I'm going to have to bring us back to the actual uh, in-game screen. I haven't unlocked it yet. Really, the only thing about it is it's melee damage. So, with the Trauma, I think this is the second Trauma gun we've had. Because I'm pretty sure it's just this and the Centennial Trauma. So, the Rival 78 Trauma does a heavy melee damage of 216, which will one-shot any hunter. So, that's nice. Let's see, right here, Centennial Trauma, same damage, 216. So, yeah. Good, I guess. You've already got a shotgun. If you miss both shots, run up, smack them. You know, it's another piece of utility to add to your kit, you know. If you bring the Trauma, you might not need to bring Brass Knuckles because you can just smack in a Molitor and kill him. Okay, back to the Steam page. Bear Traps. Here's the new Bear Traps. Which, I guess that's cool. Can you put these anywhere? Okay, kinda. Wow. Okay. Unless you have Bloodless, Bear Traps will do Heavy Bleed, and they take away about 40 health, give or take. I'm not sure how to feel about it. I still, I'm not the best at traps, so I'm still working on that, but it's cool. It's good. I'll call it good because it's not bad. It's not ugly. I think it's good. So we'll, we'll we'll call it good, and it is neat. Also, there's no difference in the bear traps you pack with you and the bear traps you find in game. They do the same thing, just different colors. The new custom ammos, the crossbow steel bolt. Now I have not got to test this. Me and a buddy did find it uh, the other day when we was playing, but I did. I sadly didn't record that, and. I wouldn't say it's a huge difference. It does fly a lot straighter and a lot faster, but I wouldn't call it a massive change. You know what I'm saying? It's good. Uh, if you want to take it, take it. It's already a special ammo weapon, so you know why not? Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's a good change. The drilling high velocity. Okay. Marathon high velocity. Okay. Marathon incendiary. That might be pretty good with the marathon. Uh, Martina Henry High Velocity. Okay. Weekly challenges. Massive improvement from the old challenge system, in my opinion, at least. The weekly challenges also give you 10 blood bonds each. So I can go into... If I view challenges... Now, these are your weekly challenges that are for everybody. Anyone can do these weekly challenges. Unless, except for the visit compounds, that is uh, solely for a battle pass owner. But look, it doesn't give you blood bonds at the bottom. If you see all the rest of these free weekly challenges, you can do these give you ten blood bonds each. You can also find blood bonds in game, so there is a lot of different ways to earn in game currency or earn paid for currency in game. This game has done it before Helldivers, and it has, I, I, in my opinion, has done it better than Helldivers, because there are a shit ton of ways to earn paid for currency. Improved gunplay experience. You can now center your crosshair. Uh, I forgot to do that in the stream, but it's literally just centered. It's that by default now. 
for anyone coming into the game, but I kept mine at lowered because I was so used to it. And really, I think it works for this game better because of the iron sight mechanic. So just me. But if you like it centered, you play better centered, go for it. Good for you. So with the ballistics aspect of things, a million changes, as it says here in the... So what we've got is... Bullet. We have bullet drop now. Uh, small ammo has the least amount of bullet drop because it's a lightweight bullet traveling fast. Medium ammo has more. Uh, long ammo has the most. And then slugs and the Nitro Express have the utmost. The Nitro Express acts like a slug, but is much more powerful, much faster, much stronger than a slug, of course. So, yeah, it has the same mechanics as a slug, except raised past the bar of a slug shotgun. So, something to keep in mind. Probably back there. 152 meters and it has a 145 meter drop okay so if we aim just barely above the head as a headshot oh he's all okay there there we go 193 meters let's see aim for the head hit torso okay See, a lot of people were complaining about bullet drop whenever it was first announced. I think it is implemented in a very good, uh, realistic manner, in my opinion. Yeah, like, it's very easy to compensate for, even with long ammo. And they said long ammo was going to have the most bullet drop because ballistics, of course. We'll try it with the sparks and see if it's the same. Okay, aim for the head. I've got so much sway. I mean, similar. Similar hit about torso again. Aim high a little bit. Oop. Yeah, headshot. That's the simplest thing in the world to compensate for. Now, the Centennial is medium ammo, so it should have less drop. Correct controller please slightly above another headshot I mean I guess I can try the aperture oh nope turn it on yeah let's see I done like it's still torso Torso. Torso. Headshot. All right. Yeah. Like I said, that's really. I don't see a huge deal with it, in my opinion. It's implemented in a good, good way, I think. So. Not too worried about that. Um. Shotgun changes. Okay. Shotgun change is absolutely. Uh, it has made shotguns much more powerful but has also made shotguns a little bit more difficult to wield because you simultaneously have added accuracy to it but you've also increased the skill gap needed to use it to a certain degree okay and they've especially made that clear with uh, sawed off shotguns like the Spectre and the Rival they are much more effective at ranges that they would rather not be effective in in the legacy version of the game. So, good change. I very much appreciate it. Shotguns are still terrifying. <laughs> they really make you want to rethink how you attack a uh, position, person, player, place, whatever. So, good change overall. Really like it. Hmm. It is really nice, though, to one-shot people with a shotgun. Shotguns are scary in this game. I wasn't paying attention to you. Hip fire is so much more viable now. Jesus Christ. That's kind of insane. Actually, let me test. That's penny shot. Where's slugs? This right there, slugs. What's the drop off range? 25. We are at 20. One shot. Wait, that wasn't a one shot. What? Okay. 
12. One shot, okay. Okay, let me step way back here. That is 101 damage. 24? 116, okay. Alright, we can still headshot with it though, so that's good. Ooh. Okay, the... The new shotgun stuff might be... Might be pretty good. And here is the baddest, ugliest change of them all. The UI. Oh, the UI, the UI, the UI. Now, they already went on record on X and posted and said that they will be reverting many changes. They are hearing player feedback. They're doing all these different things to ensure that our voices are being heard and the changes are being implemented as soon as possible. They're hearing feedback. They're figuring out what they need to re-implement, what they need to take out, what they need to change. What we're talking about is the UI change. If you've played the game before, you know the UI was good needed improvement it needed improvements in areas here and there but overall it was a decent ui it was easy enough to learn and manage and understand i have come around to this one in learning it i don't like it near as much as i did the last one but i am starting to learn it a little bit better it's basically call of duty ui and i i hate saying that but that is what it reminds me of the most i'm sorry if that offends you but that's what it is because on the main play, you've got Bounty Hunt, Soul Survivor, all your game modes. You have Last Mission, Down 1. Then you have the Battle Pass story, all the Battle Pass stuff on the third one. Fourth one is the store. Fifth one is your progression. Through all the different items and consumables and whatnot. Over a tab is your Hunters. The Hunter page is absolutely terrible. It's a downgrade from the last one. The loadouts are downgraded. It is now much harder to actually equip anything. You go to tools. Now you don't, you can't see what tools you already have equipped. So let's say I want to go equip the dusters. I got the dusters and then I have to go back, click on it again and equipped. Oh, let's say I want, I need my med kit. So I'm going to equip my med kit. Yep. Then I got to go to the third one. Well, let me scroll around. What do I need? Uh, what guns do I have? I don't remember. I don't have any guns. <laughs> but if you want to go to your loadouts, and let me just pick one here, and let me swap one of these out for a second sticky bomb. Okay? So now I have two sticky bombs there, right? Let me buy and equip this loadout. I don't have either sticky bomb. So that's broken. So now I, gotta go, I have to go in and equip two sticky bombs. That sucks. You go here to pick a fire, pick a weapon, and the filtering system is all jank, jacked up and retarded. I do like the new system of uh, having all weapons, uh, all base weapons unlocked, and you have to earn XP with them to unlock the variants of each. I enjoy that. I like having everything at my disposable, dispos disposal at once, and you can lock away the tools and consumables behind the, and the traits behind your leveling system. So that's not bad. Ugly, bad. It's going to change soon. So we're going to move on. We're going to move on here. They got a couple of different gunplay changes, general weapon changes, reduced the sway of stockless weapons, reduced recoil for dual pistols, uh, reduced damage from for the uppercut to 123, reduced damage for the haymaker to 122, uh, increased friction of dropped weapons to reduce sliding on slopes, uh, improved the spread of the Mako 1895 and its variants. This also improves levering. So... In total, uh, general quality of life changes to a lot of the things in the game. Of course, a slight nerf to the uppercut and haymaker, but, you know, what are you going to do? They were pretty strong. Uh, Deadeye scope mobility, so... Player's mobility while aiming down sights with the Deadeye weapon is no longer reduced, setting them apart from other scopes. Nice. The increase in sway when aiming down sights with the Deadeye weapon during and after moving has been reduced. Cool. So, Deadeye scopes much more maneuverable levering changes levering oh dear lord levering levering has been increased rate of fire wise uh improved spread so more accurate and it affects literally all lever actions in game <laughs> it's actually kind of insane it levering is really good now of course it's still rng you could get lucky and hit all your shots you could get absolutely steamrolled and not hit a single one if you're not within range so 
it's still uh, luck of the draw, but it is m much more in favor of your of your coin toss, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. I'm not a gambler. Or am I? Oh, here, I do want to test the terminus with fanning, actually. All right, how fast can we lever? Pretty damn fast. Okay, that's a... Uh... That's kind of wild, actually. Uh, where was that one gun? Where's the swift? Where's the swift? I've seen it. There it is. Give me that. Let's test it with this. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then one, two... I mean, you reload fast as shit too. So if you got the swift, yeah, you can get, you can definitely destroy some people. Silence to change. Normalized iron sights across all weapons. Now I could not see a huge difference in the Centennial or the Nagant or any of those guns. The main gun I seen a major difference in was the one I played with in game on stream and that was the frontier 73c silencer yep that one had a much more clear crisp iron sight and i really enjoyed it a lot better couldn't tell a huge difference in the other ones but that one right there also these iron sights are a huge upgrade from what they used to be so so very happy with that that is amazing i missed i missed Oh! I jumped. Uh, Scott field changes, increased rate of fire for the precision, improved spread, slight buff. Good buff, but still a slight buff. Uh, hunting bow changes. Now, the hunting bow change is interesting. Increased damage for the bow's basic and poison arrows. These changes make the hunting bow as effective as it was with 100 hands in the old version, which means now it is even stronger with 100 hands in post update. Hunting bow, massive upgrade, plus all custom ammo counts go from 3 to 5 with cust with custom ammo, so another massive upgrade for the hunting bow. High velocity change, just semantics. Spitzer ammo has reduced capacity compared to standard ammo, making each shot count more. Spitzer is the... Spitzer is extremely effective on long weapons, especially the Mosin, and you can wallbang almost damn near anything with it. And I think that's kind of what they want to cut back on is people just going for wall bangs constantly and having the ammo capacity to be able to just continuously try and get wall bangs and just try and shoot you through walls. I kind of think that's what they're going for with that. Not not a terrible change, but it is a nerf. Full metal jacket ammo changes added stronger recoil when firing FMJ. Slight nerf. Really only going to affect uh, semi-automatic weapons, anything like that. Miscellaneous ammo change. Semantics. <laughs> uh, they removed the electric lamp from the game. Can we get Fs in the, Fs in the comments, please, for the electric lamp? Gone, but never forgotten. Rest in peace. Moving on. Uh, fire damage has increased, so the Hellfire Bomb will now do instantly 49 damage to 24, so you will likely instantly have a large bar burned off. <laughs> And the interesting one is increased burn damage on alert trip mines from 10 to 25. So now if you step on an alert trip mine, you are immediately burning off 25 health. If you have a small health chunk, gone instantly. This is either going to be nerfed immediately or this is going to change the way a lot of people play the game. And I can kind of see how it goes back and forth between you want to run and gun and go balls to the wall and rush everybody with a shotgun and try and get kills. But if someone has the bounty layer already set up, trapped up, and ready for you, you're going to run into th two or three alert trip mines and burn off half of your health within a matter of seconds. So I think that's going to add another level of... Uh, making it a little slower, making your push a little slower, making it more calculated, and overall I think it's a decent change to uh, certain ways people play the game. You can still run and gun, but you may want to look where you're walking. 
look where you're running next time. So that's good. Trap changes. I didn't get to test these very much because I've kept forgetting to bring traps in game, but uh, I couldn't find them in the shooting range either for some reason. But other way, traps, you can now place them on any surface as long as it's, I don't know, improves how trip tripwire traps can be placed in the environment both ends of traps are now tested for suitable placement positions which means that traps can now span across empty spaces like crevices or window frames placement on slopes in uneven terrain is now more forgiving and encourages players to find new ways to hide them from careful observers doors window shutters and elevators will now trigger any tripwire traps they touch requiring a more careful approach as opening a door might set them off instead of stepping on them these changes also benefit the placement of bear traps to be more forgiving overall. Bear traps now apply a short slowdown to their victims, which I did notice as I tested them in the range, and strong increase of damage for bear traps, which I said was about 40 with a heavy bleed. So, beetle changes increase speed of the fire beetle to match other beetles. I didn't know it was slower. I never noticed it before, but I'm glad that's fixed. Uh, increased burn damage done by the fire beetle to 25, so now you will burn off a whole health chunk off of somebody with the fire beetle. And increased damage done by a stalker beetle explosion to 50, which is decent change. Beetles are now a little bit more powerful. Faster burning. The burn speed of down hunters has been dr drastically increased from 1 fire damage per second to 2.5, and we have noticed that quite a bit. We get burnt out much faster now. It is much more of a... Do I want to save my teammate or do I want to let them die? So much more of a dire situation if one of your teammates start to get burned. Burn speed of a down hunter with salve skin trait has been increased from 0 0.75 damage to 1.65 damage per second. So even with salve skin, you're still getting burned out fairly quick. And choke finally, but last but not least, choke cloud changes. Reduce choke cloud lifetime of all choke items, so choke bolts, choke beetles, and choke bombs from 120 seconds to 60 seconds, which I think is a needed change. I noticed choke bombs. You throw choke bombs and you really kind of wish they'd lasted a little bit less, and sometimes you wish they lasted a little bit longer, but you know. I think it's a good change overall. I think it kind of will promote the use of the choke bolts on the hand crossbow or the choke beetle. Even though the choke beetle is kind of mid, but you know, what can you do? I hope you have thoroughly enjoyed this little video here. I've been very much enjoying the new Hunt Showdown update, much to my dismay and utter hatred for the UI system, but thankfully, Crytek is listening, they are making changes, and they are listening to us. So keep on at it and keep on keeping on, basically. So, yeah. Did you hear about NFX having passionate sex with John 1896 in the new? What? Yuki, what? What the fuck did you just make me read? Why did you. How, how did you flashbang me with words?